All right, so hi, uh, I'm Brian Cardell. I'm a developer advocate from Agalia. I'm Eric Meyer, also a developer advocate at Agalia. So we uh, listened to the Shop Talk show, but a few weeks ago I was listening to episode 544 and I got kind of excited because they were getting into some stuff that I've been really trying to get people to talk about more. And uh, since then, there's like also been a number of follow-ups. They got into all kinds of things. And so we invited them to come onto the show. And yeah, I'm pleased to say hey to Chris and Dave. Hey, thanks Howdy for having Howdy. us. Yeah. Yeah. Great to be here in the virtual studio. Wonderful. Thanks. For Pretty coming. good turnaround too. Episode 544 was just in December. I know it's February now, but still, you know, mm -hmm. as far as as far as getting four hardworking adults in the same room. Yeah, and we had some challenges. Like we when we were scheduled last time, Dave like lost all his power. Uh, yeah, so. it's a uh, you know all yeah. things considered, I think everything that's gone wrong can go wrong. So I think we're we're good to record. And, and we still got to turn around pretty quick. So I'm yeah. I'm pleased. Yeah. So, so you, it, you is, it is it is pretty windy here today while we're recording. So if okay, I suddenly good. drop off, it's because I lost. <laughs> uh -oh. my power. Good, good. Okay. Sorry, Chris. What <laughs> I spoke too soon. Well, I was just saying, you know, because Brian brought up 544, I was just looking back on what we were talking about. And that is, we got into talking about different browsers and what engines and stuff they use. And I kind of assume that's where we're headed with all this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that there, like, you raised a lot of interesting questions. Like, you, you talked about ARC and, like, getting into that, you were saying, like, well, it's not a, uh, it's not an engine. Um, it uses Chromium. And then... You kind of also hearken back to, I think you wrote a, a nice piece in the past about like, you know, what is a browser and, and what is like, what is Chromium? You have to kind of rip some stuff out of it, you said. Um, yeah, I still, I, you would know more about it than I do, but I do find that interesting that if one of the ways that you could, if you were so inclined to make a new browser, you could fork one of the open source browsers that already exists, but it's not as simple as that. I don't think, I don't think you can just hit the fork button and GitHub and run, you know, NPM build browser or something. And then, and then just start like, I don't know, I'm going to mess with the CSS and make my tabs orange. Like I assume that it's going to be harder than that. And even when you're done, then what you still have is even if that were to work, you just, you have a, a fork, you know, you didn't really make a new browser. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not as easy as that. And it's not the same for any of them. Like, um, Firefox is a little different than how it works mm -hmm. for Chromium is a little different than how it works for WebKit. So like the Chromium project, like one part of the Chromium project is the blink engine, but the Chromium project also is like the basis for Chrome and Chrome OS even. So mm -hmm. there's a, there's a whole lot of stuff in there and, um, they provide implementations and a lot of the implementations like um, have some default, but also they can go to like Google services and you, you can, if you make a fork, you can sort of buy access to those Google services like uh, speech API is an example of that. Mm -hmm. mm. I would, right. kind of, that's kind of like a, I mean, from what I hear, like when edge forked uh, blink, right. Um, or Chromium, they kind of they had a post where they ripped out all the Google specific stuff, and I remember them talking about that, and it was very interesting. It was like something like sixty APIs, which you might be like, "Oh, that's Google spy tech," you know, but I don't think that's exactly it. It just was like convenience features, you know, or just like uh, I don't know. I I don't know the yeah. specifics, but it's just really interesting, like. I, I kind of like, are we in a ship of Theseus situation <laughs> thesis where we're like, how many, how much do you have to replace of Chrome to like have a new browser, you know? Um, no, it's not at all. I mean, Chromium is, uh, I think currently it's really hard to keep track because it grows so rapidly. I think it's currently 34 million lines of code. I mean, that's, it takes a day to read or so. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's a lot. You definitely don't have to replace all that or you would never get anywhere. Um, but no, I think actually the a, a key thing to keep in mind is the word engine, right? So this is like actually a better metaphor than we give credit for because like an engine, like it needs to be connected on all sides, right? Like it it is an architecture, it is too. And if you plug in all the right things, 
you can like generate power and transfer the power to the to the wheels, but you need like to connect inputs and outputs. That's what the web engines are. And browsers are on top of that. Right. Because what we think of as a browser, I think really is a is a user interface shell, which I think is what you were experiencing, Chris, with Arc. You were like, you know, saying how different an experience it was, even though the engine is exactly this, like exactly the same as, as if you were running Chrome. But the experience mm -hmm. was not in the same way that if you take an engine out of a Buick Escalade or whatever, and then you put it in a sports car, it's a very different experience. Exactly. And that's exactly. good, kind of, right? It opens up some mm -hmm. doors to experimentation. It's pretty cool that Arc exists. I'm literally mm -hmm. using it right now to be in this 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 podcast but it yeah. doesn't so it, it increases what you might call like the diversity of of the experience of using a browser out there mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's still going to cost some money you'd have to you'd, it's going to be an awful lot of work to produce one of these things uh and in the end maybe that's good for people but it doesn't increase the diversity of that engine situation and that was just it's just been hotly talked about for years now because <laughs> it never gets any better it only gets worse it seems yeah. like that is yeah bang that's that's it like it 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 doesn't get better it only gets worse um and it gets increasingly harder to change it and um right the thing that powers a lot of it i mean it's like it costs hundreds of millions of dollars a year to maintain each one of those engines. And like, where does it come from? Why, like, why? Like, uh, I think, uh, Chris, mm -hmm. you, you asked a question that I thought was like really like pertinent. It was like, forget the engine for a minute. Like what, what is the monetary incentive to build a browser? I mean, I guess they'll sell it at some point or try to, but will people buy like enough people? Will they, will, will it be lucrative or like, what, what will they do? And, um, that, I mean, that is sort of the problem is that the thing that funds all of the money coming in is somehow, I think is safe to say ultimately through default search deals, which is mm -hmm. like a thing that we got to in 2004 when both Firefox one was coming out. Uh, Mozilla was this open new thing that got some initial like startup mm -hmm. money. But then, you know, it was running out and somehow you have to, you have to find a business model here. Um, and Google had this hot new engine that they also wanted to sell, but nobody wanted to buy it. Um, so they decided to make their own thing and sell those silly little ads, which I joke all the time. I like, I laughed. I thought like, that, that's cute, right? <laughs> um, it's almost like the, the plot for Superman three, right? It's like, we just collect fractions of a cent but billions and billions and billions of time will be super rich and they were right they were <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so and, i mean to the tune right like like i mean not I, I don't know the books right i know apple's like part of their the webkit budget is the chrome search deal same with mozilla the chrome or the google search deal sorry you know like the like Google's also paying to be the default search engine in a lot of these browsers. And so it's, yeah, that, that's right. That one thing is kind of funding a lot of web, you know? Um, yeah. And it's not, I mean, it's not oops. exclusively Google. There are other ones, but sure, like sure, that, sure. that is the interesting missing thing that browsers didn't have until we did integrated search, like the wonder bar at the top, yeah. you know, before that it was always like you had to go to a search engine and execute a search. But now mm -hmm. it's even integrated. It's like clearly it's an important, critical part of the web. Like you just can't. Are you, you don't have a web browser if you don't have that. Are you hypothesizing a a reality in which Yahoo or web crawler could have won? Uh, I mean, but Yahoo did win. Yahoo did win <laughs> so. until yeah. they lost, and that is actually the thing that worries me is that um, someday Google is going to lose, and someday Apple mm -hmm. is going to lose. I mean, I hope it's not tomorrow. Um, right, right. It doesn't look likely to be tomorrow, but you know, like, who knows? Time, like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate, but you know, there's, you can look around at the news and, and see lots of things are changing, you know? Yeah. I mean, okay, you, so what's could... the point of that though, is that if, if the, if both of them lose, which you think is inevitable <laughs> at some way that the, the a hundred percent of the funding for browsers also disappears. Is that the scary part? As the markets currently is 
structured. I would say pretty close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's, that's the, that's sort of the concern. It's a long-term concern, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's a lot like climate change. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the sense that this is going to be a problem someday and possibly a serious existential problem in some ways, but it might be five, 10, 15 years. But, you know, I mean, you could look, like you say, you could look at the news and you might say to yourself, maybe Google going all in on machine learning, quote unquote, artificial intelligence turns out to be a bust. It takes, Mm -hmm. it takes four years to figure it out, but they basically, you know, Mm -hmm. exhaust themselves trying to make this work. And it turns out that it doesn't for some reason that nobody can guess. You know, the, yeah. the market shifts uh, at exactly the wrong time, or there are inherent limitations in this technology that nobody has figured out yet, right? Because mm-hmm. nobody's gone that far, but, you know, so Google bet the company on it, you know, and I'm not, I'm not predicting that this is going to doom Google, but I'm just saying, you know, you can imagine a, a, a poss- you know, an outcome where, wow, they completely went all in, they developed tunnel vision around this, and then, you know, these other factors led to, you know, this, the reality of 2030, where, you know, people say, you know, where, where kids are like, grandpa, tell me more about Google. What was that again? (laughs) Right. No, I mean, no, that is totally, um, just within our own lifetimes, like this has happened, right? I mean, like there have been whole paradigms established that don't even exist anymore. Like blockbuster video, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we had, we went from like brick and everything was brick and mortar malls were everything to now like malls barely exist um yeah. yep. so things change and it let's say that were to happen all the money dries up for that from these two sources anyway for browsers what we're left with is whatever we whatever's on github or whatever maybe github goes away too but but well, right. what happens is we're locked in time it's not that browsers go away it's just they stop kind of evolving in the way that we're used to them evolving. Yeah, but they'll also bit rot, right? Um, mm-hmm. So mm. uh, operating systems will continue to develop and they will continue to update and drivers will continue to develop and update and graphics cards will contri- continue to, right? So somebody will need to keep them alive. Like it, it costs money to keep the lights on, you know? Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's not to say that the web will disappear, right? Like I, I do think yeah. that we will manage to keep the web going. But it would be a very different thing. What were you saying, Dave? Oh, I just, you know, I, I was like, I was just like, oh, Firefox will save us. That, that was like where I jumped to in my head, you know? Uh, and then, but then, you know, I, like I have to remember, like I have this, this idea in my brain that Firefox is whatever, five neck beards in a dungeon, like just, <laughs> just <laughs> coding it, you know, but it's, it's an actual business, you know, it had, in Netscape, Mark Andreessen bucks, and then it got bought by AOL, and then it had AOL bucks, and you know, and they have office buildings, and you know, they have Google search money, and so um, it, it's, yeah, like I, I think my my idea is like, oh, Net or Mozilla is just this really, they'll they'll do it, you know, but it's it's actually a big operation, you know, like it's not, it's right. not, it, it's not nearly as big as the other two engines operations, from what we can tell. Um, right right you know but it's yeah it is it is still an operation and i do i do think that if i I think if you know thanos snaps his fingers and only doesn't get rid of half of the life in the universe he just gets rid of google and apple i don't know had a bad experience with an android and an ios device or something (laughs) um and he just makes them go away then i think browsers would like the web wouldn't go away and the web would still continue to evolve slowly and browsers would at, the, at first evolved very slowly on basically on the backs of volunteer work, but that only lasts for so long. And, you know, this could happen very quickly, right? So Google doesn't have to disappear. Google just has to decide that they have enough of the market that they don't need to pay other browsers to be the default search in those browsers. Mm-hmm. That's we know that's the case for Firefox, right? And it has been for a long time. That it, once well, in a while it gets surfaced that the, this huge chunk of what makes them exist as a company comes directly from Google, right? Ninety-five percent. Yeah, ninety-five percent. Yeah, ninety-five percent. Yeah, they're they're there's they are the ones that established this model, right? Um, and the the interesting thing about that is that they that is a historical accident because mm-hmm. the web almost died, 
like M- Microsoft walked away, right? Like they won the game and then they said, we're going to go do Silverlight, right? <laughs> we're going to go do, you know, the next mm-hmm. web. Yeah, um, this web is done. Yeah. And it was actually, you know, this open source hope that received some funding and was actually moving forward in, in a big way. Um, they hadn't even released a 1.0 and they, they already had like 3% of the market or something like that. Um, so just to never... hang on to that for a moment, does it, is it, it feels wildly inevitable to me that that's, that's not going to last. That someday yes. Google <laughs> is going to snap those fingers and, and Mozilla is just, how, how can they survive that? 95%. Uh, well, so here's my thought. Can I get well, to my drama? Please. I, like, yes. <laughs> I just, I think that's an insurance policy. This is Dave Rupert, uh, ruining my ability to ever work for a browser, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Like, it just feels like an insurance policy so they don't get sued for having a browser monopoly. That's my hot take. Uh, and mm. they'll keep paying that insurance policy until they get tired. So, oh, so you until Dave's Edge world, gets they, popular that's, enough. They are not going to snap those fingers because it's more valuable for them to have it than not. That's it pretty juicy. Legal protection mm. for them. That's my hot take. You, no one, I know you guys all work with browsers, so you don't need to come and, and ruin your relationships. I'll take the blame. I'll take the heat. So, well, I, just, I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting perspective. I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I don't like. I don't. You know, Brian and I do not have. We do not sit on the inner councils of the WebKit and Chrome teams. We're very much outsiders. And yes, That's we do. Inter- surprising you, to me. You know, we we interface with them, but. And for that matter, I don't know that the Chrome and WebKit teams sit in the inner councils of, you know, whatever parts of Apple and, you know, like the Chrome team does not direct the strategy of, you know, who, you know, paying for default search. That's, that's not their job. That that's not Mm -hmm. part of it. And they probably are in some ways firewalled from it. Right. They, they, they probably can't. If anything, they are dictated to from it as their largest. Mm -hmm source of their only really source of funding right right well, well, so and that's yeah so there's some part of google and maybe for all we know it's the legal team is like yeah it's we can keep paying whatever google you know firefox mozilla whoever mm-hmm. they are it's a rounding error on our quarterly search revenue but so when, when things get real tight companies start to cancel contracts yeah. or not well, and we're seeing a contraction right now right we and sure are kind of frightening so so you may know that we are making a browser ourselves yeah that was originally from a company you might know called mozilla (laughs) Um, so yeah like let's let's talk about that because you are making a browser a uh vr based browser correct Mm -hmm. and like what's what's that been like or what is i guess how does that I don't know. Like, like, are you feeling the pressures of how do we fund this or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like Like we're, um, like we're using this to, uh, in part start a discussion and try to try to change this problem because, um, it's not, it's not great. And, and like, just to hold up an example, um, I have said that we're lucky that the mall that we have today keeps going. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm And it's a historical accident, though, that you created a Mozilla this way. Um, Mozilla signed the 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 contract that made this the the means of making things practical. Like it's not, you know, don't misunderstand. It's not like there is a direct connection in Apple, for example, that's like this money funds this work, right? Mm-hmm. But like when you look at the ledgers of what it costs to have this. <laughs> versus what you get from having it like it's pretty plain that well it's actually profitable so of course we're just going to keep doing it and i'm not speculating how long it would take if you removed that deal but i expect that you know like every every other business they're a business right (laughs) and you don't just pick projects that bleed you hundreds of millions of dollars and growing right Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you're a new browser uh, the only source that you can get mainly like the main source, um, is a default search deal, but to get a default search deal, you need a situation like Mozilla had where you, you already have 2% of the market or 3% of the market. 
Um, and that's just not really possible, right? Like, hmm. I always thought yeah. it was it, you could. I need a really tiny browser to put spyware on TVs. I thought that was a secondary. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's, there's that too. Hey. But <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that that's the thing. Creating a new, you know, I mean, Arc is I'm sure facing the same. Yeah sort, yeah, sort of problem is you know they're creating a quote unquote new browser, even though it's based on a on an existing engine. It's basically Chrome under the hood, whatever. It's still a new to the user. It's a new browser, and as you've been experiencing, Chris, the it's like a new way of interacting with the web and web content and the browser itself. And maybe that's enough for them to get a million users, right? That's not even one percent of the market. <laughs> Oh yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we have a goal by the end of next year to have two million users. So, right, which yeah, again that's... is not one percent of the like overall web market, right? So to to get to that three or four or five percent, whatever it is, whatever that threshold is, where Google starts to think, all right, maybe we'll pay you. Maybe we we'd like to be the default search on your browser. We'll pay you. You know, here's a several pallets of cash that we'll drop in your front yard, or even just one. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want I want to aim high here, Brian. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, but to get to that point is really hard, and you know that's right. that's something Arc is 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 you know you, I don't and I'm not saying that that's their plan is to find five million or ten million or whatever million users. Maybe they have a completely different exit plan that involves you know I don't know getting bought by Microsoft or Apple or some mm -hmm. other company that decides that they want their own sort of bespoke branded browser. Maybe, maybe that's what they're aiming to do, or maybe they just want to be a browser company. Maybe they want to yeah. be the browser company of New York, like in perpetuity, they're not interested in selling. Like I have no idea, but if they're trying to create sustainable funding right now, the model is they have to get big enough to get Google or some other search engine, but it's probably Google to pay them, you know, $50 million a year, a hundred million dollars a year, or whatever million dollars a year it is. I don't know. Or it seems like they have a, a billion, path. half a billion. If you're Firefox, if you're Firefox, right. like if you, if they, if arc does an amazing job, mm -hmm. they, they have a UI that they, they have options. They could put ads mm -hmm. on it. They could sell memberships. They, I mean, there's two, there's two, they have those two. But the, <laughs> at least they have them. If you're going to make a new engine, you don't have either of those. Really. You got, there's no monetary incentive to maintain an engine. Um, right, there, so is totally mon there is totally monetary incentives to make a browser. And so you could um, just like hypothetically, let's say you're like the FUBAR device company um, and you make devices and you're going to make five million devices and you're like well i can make a cheap version of android open source operating system and i can make a cheap version of my own play store control what i put into it and one of the things that i'm going to put in it and on by default is my own fork of chromium hey brian right. samsung's right here you don't need to talk about the abstract <laughs> they're right here in the room no, it's good. Uh, I'm just, I mean, I'm just saying like you, you can do that and um, you don't have to put any money back into it and you have a pretty good negotiating strategy for um, getting default search money, right? Uh, you're not, you're not contractually obligated to somehow participate and invest money back in. And it's not a comment on uh, mm -hmm. anybody or any company. It's just a fact. Um, mm -hmm. It's a problem with open source, right? Like everybody, there's a great thing about open source that anybody can spin up an idea really fast, right? Like that's great. We can make these amazingly complicated things, but then we can also turn them into something like fantastically successful. And then like our users become somebody else's problems and we don't, we don't want to fund that work. And then those people burn out and, you know, like, uh, it gets worse because there's there's too many asks of the system. So uh, it's an interesting problem that we need to work on fixing. And that's like kind of what Egalia's whole thing is um, trying to 
fix that problem. Um, yeah, you've had a couple of interesting takes on it. One of them was that uh, it was a year or two ago now was the kind of like put your let's ask actual people like, oh, yeah, you want this CSS feature? <laughs> Prove it with money. <laughs> I mean, you we all pay, right? We do pay. Um, yeah. It we have done a fantastic job of hiding the fact that we pay. Um, but you're, you're paying, you're a valuable commodity as a user of a, a browser who needs to do default search. Um, like several dollars per user per year is the value. Mm. Um, so, you know, like you're, you're paying, you're just paying with other ways. You're paying with your eyeballs. Maybe you're paying with some of your privacy. Maybe you're paying, you know, Mm -hmm. um so we can like let those uh companies do all the deciding because they're overwhelmed by uh, asks from everybody we can keep depending on them more and more we can keep asking more and more we can keep leaning into this broken system or we could just say like the whole system is broken and like we want stuff and we should find other ways to fund the stuff then we can get what we want <laughs> Um, or what we need. That's the challenge, of course. Yeah, I, I know you have some ideas, Brian. But they, I think we should talk about them too because they're they're interesting. But there isn't like infinite business models to reach for, in a way. Like there's hmm. really only a, a, a couple. <laughs> I mean, that's not totally true. There's lots of interesting ways to to make money in the world. But from digital products, from making your two bucks per user or per browser or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's like if if business models were easy to experiment with, what everybody would be would be doing it sure. in a way, or if there sure. was proven ways to do it. So you you have a, a recent blog post just from a few days ago on like kind of comparing it to the Super Bowl as as oh yeah, as that right? Right, yeah. I mean, that's could... that's just because like um, I just reflect back to your show and Dave was commenting on like some stuff that Microsoft did. That he was like, man, I just find that really gross, and I I hate it. Like, I don't want ads in my browser. You know, um, I I would say that's gotten worse too. I, like, it's just there's a little sparkle button in my in my edge now, and I just yeah. I don't like it. You know, and and I click the sparkle button because it's different colored than the rest of the UI, and guess what? It opens up a uh, Office three sixty five. You know. Which yeah. I have, but I don't really use online. I just like make PowerPoints twice a year, you know, for talks. Like, so I don't know. I, I'm just kind of like it. That's sort of frustrating to me, right? Like, like I'm just there. I guess they got to make money, you know, put Bing in, in MSN and stuff. But hearing um, your take on that is why I put in those examples of like, uh, you know, people were happy. Like they liked that people downloaded Opera and Vivaldi because of Speed Dial. And yeah. Like mm. Speed, Speed Dial, Dial being... it's just yeah. default search icon. It's like, it's just default icons in your, in your start page, really. Right. Mm. Like that's okay. so of all you, it is. Like when you open up a new browser window, it would give you a set of like buttons that were here are your most visited sites or here are some yeah. search engines or, and you, that could, was their killer could, feature really, which was like novel at fact, the time. Yeah. It was super novel at the time. Yeah. And, and, but like, what are, it weren't just your most recent ones. They were like, here are some that like everybody goes to that's really popular. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, like they will take money to put them on there. Like that's part of the business model. Um, mm -hmm. Mm. And yeah, they do that, right? Like the, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like your top eight on MySpace, if they have like the re recommended apps when you download or whatever. Exactly, right. you can pay for or, them. They're kind of an ad. Or the thing Firefox does uh, these days, where usually when you open a new win, the first time you open a new window after you update, it'll give you a full page ad for Pocket, which sometimes Firefox, which they can. Well, okay, yeah. sometimes which Mozilla owns, but then. What what was the movie, Brian? You were reminding me of this. Um, yeah, Seeing Red, or wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Turning Turning Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, red, the Pixar yeah. movie where it was just like this big thing for Turning Red, which was, you know, probably 
probably a lot of people were like, oh, that's cute. And some people were like, oh, God, another ad. Right. But I'm sure, you know. Yeah. It would have been worse they, if it was Coinbase or something. They, right? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. They also yeah. didn't do it for free. Right. Like the Disney or Pixar or whoever, whatever, wherever the money came from. Somebody wrote them a check. To, maybe. Maybe. Well, or, or something. Did something. I'm curious. I would like to know if you know the answer to this question. Oh, yeah. You can actually. email me. Right. In yeah, what that's... universe would they not get a check for advertising well, a Pixar movie? Maybe um, some kind in, of time thing. In a partnership world where, um, like, Pixar doesn't really feel like they need Mozilla, but Mozilla feels like they need this to demonstrate something. <laughs> hmm. um, I could see that. I did yeah. verify this with somebody at McDonald's one time. Who I talked to a guy whose wife worked at McDonald's a long time because I was fascinated by who pays who for Happy Meal, Happy Meal toys. Oh, you, interesting. Is there any world in which that a company will pay McDonald's to put their toy in the thing? And apparently it does happen sometimes and that each deal is very unique about what hmm. goes in there. And sometimes it's the other way around that, that, yeah, that McDonald's indeed says like, oh, we will sell a lot more Happy Meals if we put an Elsa yeah you know, right you know right what I mean? yeah so that so, it goes so they that actually, way yeah so mcdonald's pays disney for the rights to have frozen toys yeah. in their happy Meals and in that one there's such heavyweights that it might be a no money changes hands deal because it's so oh wow for both of them wow yeah potentially interesting. interesting but you had some interesting thoughts brian they said that the number of people that even that just use firefox is so high yeah it's, yeah it's comparative to to super bowl numbers and in fact are much higher. It's higher, yeah. It's higher than Super Bowl numbers. So Which what is kind of even, even, even bucks, what kind of numbers Super are we talking Bowl about? <laughs> What's that? What kind of numbers are we talking about here? Like how many people? Uh I think Roughly. I think that the last was uh Firefox had uh two I, I'm gonna foul it up, but um I think the, the Super Bowl had a max of like 150 million and Firefox is more than that. So, um, I know that Brave, I, just because I was looking at this very, very recently, Brave is currently at like 53 million or something like that. Um, wow. Yeah. Those are big numbers. They're big and, numbers, and, right? And nobody yeah. thinks Brave is a big one, right? Like nobody, not, no. not to diss Brave, but I'm just saying like in the discourse, people talk about the big ones and Brave is like not one of them. N- not the one that comes up in the top of most of those conversations. That's interesting. So, and, and so you're saying, okay, so people have paid many many millions of dollars to mm. advertise at the super bowl i was also thinking because i th- this this came up abstractly right i was i was um i went car racing a couple months ago and then mm. i got into that netflix show called drive to survive which is the way that mm. a lot of people are discovering f1 racing and i just yeah. find it all so fascinating the budgets for those teams are just nuts there's so many millions of dollars and the way that it happens is that they have sponsors for example red bull is one of the top teams right now (laughs) red bull is the team they're so sponsored and i have a red bull jacket that i bought that is absolutely covered in logos because somehow they think enough people care about and watch about those teams that it buys them an attention and goodwill or whatever that, yeah. it, that it gets on there. So those are big numbers. So when you're talking about millions of people and millions of dollars, that is the kind of scope that we need to be talking about for browsers. It's and this not... is everywhere though, right? Like this is everywhere, this sponsorship model. I mean, this is what pays for the big conferences too, right? Like the very big conferences yeah. have yeah, a lot of sponsorship big. dollars. Um, yeah. Like some of those ones, uh, I'm not going to... Like, I'm not going to name any specifically, but some of them have, CES, you know, millions like of dollars that. to be a gold level sponsor, you know? Um, right. So, yeah, I mean, so you're those, thinking those... this is possible. It's not the, you know, it's not the sponsor. This opens project on GitHub sponsors. And, you know, as Dave put it recently, you know, spend your 60 bucks at at the at the bar or whatever like th- those numbers are not enough you can't say hey users of this browser engine please support our hard work because you it's just not going to work but if there's millions of you and the companies want to reach those millions of eyeballs that might be actually millions of dollars which is the type of money that is going to actually help yeah i mean to be clear i'm saying i don't know the answer i'm saying we need an answer and there are a lot of things we could explore and it like 
is very painful to me that we can't get a good conversation like this going in the community, right? Like we, we need to talk about these things because for example, like Dave saying, I hate this thing about Microsoft, right? Like, um, like what, what can we do that we, people don't hate somehow, somehow, I don't know how like Vivaldi or opera had this, you know, feature that is like much more in your face, right? Like it's like every time you click a new tab, it's there. Um, and that people liked it. And I don't understand. <laughs> it, this is where the Super Bowl analogy comes in. Like commercials, I hate them. Like they're gross. I don't want them. But the Super Bowl, I like the commercials. And I can't explain that really. Except that we have built this cultural experience around it where... Um, like the time is valuable. So the commercial manufacturers make it valuable. And that means you're not going to see a recycled ad, right? You're not going to see something half baked. You're not going to see some cheap ad. You're not going to see, you know, the lawyer down the street who, you know, whatever <laughs> you're going to get stuff that's like big and polished. And it's going to be like world premiere of our new commercial. And that's like a different proposition than most commercials and somehow we need to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, I'm like, I'm worth $2 a year to Google or whatever. Like, that's very interesting to me. I feel like a browser could say like, give us $5 <laughs> and we'll be twice as profitable as Google uh, per user. If you pay us $5, um, then a Google sweetheart deal. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. And maybe it's like, I don't know if I was a Firefox user, I might, I might pay to be out of, you know, like that binding contract or whatever, you know, or I'd be yeah. interested. But I wonder too, I don't know if it's like, like you're saying, I like this Super Bowl idea. Like, I don't know, you know, like Google gets a lot of traffic just from the Google doodles. Like just, they do something yeah. unique, you know, they put time and effort into this thing. A whole department works on these things year round. Like, I'm not saying everything needs a Google Doodle <laughs> department, but like, you know, can can a browser offer that, you know, to an extent or something like that or some sort of, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting because, so I use Firefox primarily um, mm -hmm. because the dev tools, at least until very recently, were the best for the kind of work that I do. If I were a totally a JavaScript programmer, I would probably disagree with this and that's fine but right so i use firefox and if firefox came you know basically came to their user base and was like you know 10 bucks a year and you know you get super bookmarks but really what you're doing is you're um supporting the browser i would probably pay that right right yeah um right. even if they said 10 bucks a month i would consider it that you know and but we got real used to, we had like, as a, as a sort of an ecosystem, the ecosystem is super addicted to the idea that a browser is free. Like mm -hmm. you never, you don't have to pay a cent for running a browser, like an actual monetary cent. As Brian says, you pay in other ways, but you, no money comes out of your bank account and goes to somebody else in order to use a browser. That's going to be a real hard addiction to break is, is the problem that I see. And I don't, I, you know, you, you can donate directly. Sure. To Mozilla, for example. Right. So like right. if you're saying I would give ten dollars a month for that or ten dollars a year, whatever, like you could do that. You could do it now. Um right. But that you don't have to. And that runs into the problem of what good is it gonna do for me to give them ten bucks a month when that probably means they're making thirty bucks a month from me and two <laughs> other people. That's yeah. not gonna save them. <laughs> right? It's really challenging because like we also don't want to create a, a web of like having the web browser be free is like means that anybody can have it. Right. Like oh, it's yeah. not, it's not, uh, there are a no class economic thing, barriers, right? right. There are no right. economic barriers. You I mean, there is in the sense that you need a way to get online. You need to get connectivity. The connectivity is of course biased toward, you know, people who have an iPhone, <laughs> you know, like every, right. everything is geared toward people who have better systems, but you can get a, you know, in anywhere in the world, you can, with a little bit of work, find 
a way to access the web through a free web browser. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's important. So I think it's, it's important that we look at the history of that we've subsidized browsers. That's, that's the challenge is like, who's subsidizing? <laughs> Cause right now the answer is, it's all of the advertisers in the whole world for every subject on earth. Mm. It's like the marketing departments of every company through search, you know, because you're talking about Google ads essentially. And those companies, Google or DuckDuckGo Duck. or Bang or Yahoo or whoever your search engine is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, not, and then, yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's tricky. Like, um, you know, you can also, uh, donate to our collective for, uh, Wolvik. Um, and what do you get out of that? Well, we'll put your name in the browser <laughs> in a thank you page. And that's about all you get if it's a little bit of money, right? If you give a fairly substantial amount, $2,000 in six months, we have a, a town hall that we're going to work together in that town hall to prioritize. Like, what do we do with this money? Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have like levels of partnership that, you know, come with more, like, we'll help bring this to your device. We'll help support it on your device. Um, right. Which is interesting because as a model, that's really, yes, individual users can, can toss money in as a, you know, I want to show, I want to vote with my wallet. I want to show support for this the same way that you can do for, for GitHub repositories and stuff. But it's really, at least at the moment, the partners are the ones rather than are the ones doing the subsidizing of free access to everyone rather than every ad department on earth, mm -hmm. um, which is it's different too. It's coming from engineering budgets, right? Right. And so engineering part, budgets are inherently do more with less. Like that's what they, <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go. Right. So it's, it's a different model and you know, is it a sustainable model? We don't know. Um, we'd like to think that it can be made sustainable in some way. Is it a model that would, that could be replicated to other projects? Like uh, could other projects just take that model and say, okay, we're going to do the same thing. Don't know. Um, but it is, it's, a, it's a bit unusual to have a, any browser try to fund itself in any way other than ad revenue, basically. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, like... it's, it's hard going. I suspect it will be hard going, but it's at least, I mean, it's trying something different. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I kind of, I mean, you know, don't sell y'all self short. I mean, I, I like that, that, uh, Egalia has like some skin in the game. You y'all adopted, uh, you know, the, the Mozilla reality project and mm -hmm. like are now owning a browser. You've worked on browsers for a long time you know, kind of like guerrilla teaming into uh, like browsers that need extra support built on kind of capacity. And, and now you have something, you know, a, a browser you work on. So hopefully like, you know, if Mozilla asks like, cool, like we, we actually have that browser and we know how it works. And so we can build out that feature because we've wanted it for a long time or whatever. Like, I think that's, you know, it, for, for other kind of whatever funding models, you are the like, like paid support or kind of model of open source, you know, or the um, sort of contract, you know, for, for hire, you know, contractor <laughs> subsidized, you know, I think so. you called us the A team somewhere that I, yeah, was pretty funny. <laughs> I think it's a team. Cause it's just, it's, it's like, Oh, how are we going to make grid? It's like, Call a galia. So. <laughs> when we were talking about like what is a browser and like you know like all of the the bits of this, there we didn't talk about like a web view and the fact that there is a default web view. Since Microsoft, there is the concept of your operating system should have an integrated web view because it's useful for so many more things than just the browser. And now we go the other way. We like make products where we ship, like we package up another copy of the the engine to you know to ship a project but that is also just another web view um i don't know if you have seen but like um duck, duck go is has mm -hmm. like a um like a browser now oh really yep um and mm -hmm. they don't 
do what anybody does. Uh, they are making their thing use whatever the default engine is. So, so like on iOS, the default engine and the only engine is WebKit. And DuckDuckGo is saying like, well, actually that makes a lot of sense. Like, um, because that one is always like, the better one is the more powerful one. It's the one that's like integrated with all of your stuff. Um, and it's just a lot simpler to plug into that. We can have a really lightweight install and we're just giving you the part on top. So that's a, another like really interesting take on this that I just downloaded it. Uh, it's I'm well, so yeah, I mean like, you know, it's, it's, I guess kind of getting back to um, the, arc thing um i hope i didn't just make this my default uh, there was a great comment about arc that said that said uh, you know the reason we can be so innovative with arc in a way that you haven't seen before is be specifically because we're not beholden to a search engine and that all these search engines have this incentive to when you're trying to get somewhere if they can have you execute a search that's awesome. That's perfect. That's the metric that we care about. So why would you build a UI that's when I type in, you know, Eric Meyer CSS wish list, <laughs> I've opened that I have that tab open somewhere that it'll just go right to that tab instead mm -hmm. of open a new tab, execute that search. And hopefully it's somewhere near the top and I can click it. That sec, that latter one is better for the search engine because I've executed a search and the, the line goes up, you know, mm. whereas the set, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the former was, was a better user experience. Oh, dude, you already got the tab open. It's right there. You don't need to search again. Right. Mm -hmm. Rather than having the same thing open in four tabs, uh, yeah. which I've, I've heard ha happens to some people. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm blaming myself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm insulting myself. It'll be the yeah. same problem with DuckDuckGo, though. You know, like it's kind of mm. cool to see Ark not have that. Anyway, yeah, until yeah. they get Duck bought, Duck and then it's all over. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, that's really interesting. I like it, it. Will be interesting to see how AI changes this too, because there are some things that like an AI bot will probably be better for, and depending on where that technology lands, it, like maybe you can, in some cases, give like better privacy that way or something. Um, I don't know. There's so many, there's so many variables here that all of them seem want to think about search somehow and disrupting something about search, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. to make a better experience. And yeah, the pressures are completely different. So like ARC is getting, um, you know, angel investor money. So they're not currently dependent on the search. Whereas, you know, if you're like, I don't know, if you're Firefox, I would guess probably it would be a, it would be a big problem if you did something that interfered and made you get only half as many searches. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I right. Little, I, yeah. Like I, I like that DuckDuckGo is doing this and I like that they're using the, the, whatever the, the web view is because mm -hmm. they can just be a skin around right. it. And, and that's, as I understood arc, it is kind of, you know, I'm sure there's some deeper Google integrations, but as I understood it, it's kind of just a swift UI over some sort of browser rendering technology. They're not getting kind of deep internals as I'm understanding it. Uh, right. So I kind of like this duck, duck go as you know, we worked with a company that's kind of like that, um, company Klarna. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's like basically like you go, it's a browser plugin and you go to an e-commerce shop, Best Buy, you want to get an iPad, but you don't have enough money. They'll like issue a, you a loan basically kind of like a, you know, like it's like a little banking kind of oh, right. backend. Does that make sense? Like, it's yeah, kind of like right. you up. signed up, you get rewards while you're shopping. Like if I did a lot of e-commerce and I'm like, living and dying like my month is determined by my effectiveness at using Klarna you know a, a Klarna browser might be very good and that's kind of what their their iOS app is is basically just a it's iOS web kit view web view or whatever plus the Klarna plugin you know mm. so mm. It, it's and I think a lot of I mean Coil who I like <laughs> or Rip RIP they're going away yeah 
Uh, I like the web. Just mind moving to Inner Ledger, I think, really. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, yeah. and hopefully, like, whatever. I, I we haven't even talked about web monetization as a possible avenue for browsers, you know, sure. but like, yeah. um, you know, cause if I open it, you could just ding my, wet, my ledger, you know, my wallet, you know, <laughs> that would be great. Um, but, but like, you know, coils big thing was I had to download the Puma browser to use coil on my iPhone. I'm not going to do that, you know, <laughs> but I just wanted a, a browser plugin, but you know, if I was maybe a, dedicated coil super fan i could have downloaded puma and did that you know but coil um, did have a plug-in or they they have a chrome extension and yeah yeah braves right. bat yeah. is kind of connected yeah. there but the uh but like um but for ios specifically they didn't have the apis they needed to you right. build a web extension so right anyway uh, i just I think like well, we got that email where they were where they're closing down, and then like three days later, I got what where they charged me again, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Cool, nice, good job. thanks, thanks." <laughs> yeah. Well, I had I I literally have a, a to do list on my desk that was like stop coil question mark. I was like, oh, I guess that's done. So I'm, um, uh, but yeah, well, you might want to double check it. I like these bespoke uses I, I like that idea you know would i have yeah. used a coil browser on my desktop maybe yeah you know hmm. if it has dev tools you know but interesting um just because i i believed in web monetization you know but um so we're but, like yeah. rapidly hitting our hour there are two things i want to try to fit in really really quick um sure. one is i i think that one of the things that prevents um like businesses, the engineering department of businesses from spending money toward these open source projects, especially these big important ones, is I think we should work on making like tax breaks for funding this kind of work. Like identifying a, a few of these really important things like the web engines as a, a commons, the way we did with roads and bridges and things like that. Um, they're infrastructure of the modern world. Um, hmm. So we probably can't make people just pay taxes for them, but you know, maybe some in incentives as, as a write-off, like you could write off uh, like sponsoring some of that work would be, I think would encourage businesses to do that. Right. Uh, the engineering part. I think that'd be cool. I mean, open source too, like put that in the same bucket. I mean, you know, no, I, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it just, you know, I find, quite a few things on whatever open click if GitHub, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, if I could just be like, that was actually just a total, you know, whatever public trust maneuver, you know, yeah. but maybe that's ripe for abuse, but maybe, I don't know. That's not think, my problem. That's, I think there that's are same. definitely, it would be difficult to apply to all open source, but it would not be difficult to identify open source on which the world currently totally depends. So, you know, I think you could do like, like I say with you did with roads and bridges and things. Um, okay. So last thing I just want to say like, uh, arc, like so cool. Um, I've been using it for like a week and you know, like when people describe it, they're like the pitch is like, well, the tabs are on the side kind of, but then they can kind of go away. And like, yeah, that's like a, it's not a good pitch. <laughs> um, it, it's a, like, I know I talked to both of you about this when we came out with Wolvik, which was like, you, it's a, like, you can't understand. And then you see it and you go, Oh my God, why has nobody done this? Right. This idea of the spaces that you can flip through is brilliant. Like, it's just brilliant. I love it so much. Like, it's the thing that I always wanted that I never knew I wanted. Um, really? That's the number one for you is the, spaces. I love it. I love it so much. Man, like that's wild. Um, it's like a way for me to use like pin tabs and groups and just organize my life. So when I go like, Oh, I wanted to go to my art stuff. We could just flip over there and there's all my art stuff and it's fine. I can just say like, don't close those. Or if I do accidentally close them, the archive thing is really nice. Um, yeah. but anyway, the thing is like some of these features that will get developed in these bespoke browsers are, are, they are kind of killer features, right? Like, um, but you know, how long 
is that a um like do you think they're patenting these ideas <laughs> or like well, what yeah. what prevents you know google or apple from going yeah that's a good idea let's do that um and then it's no longer a competitive advantage it's kind of what happened with tabs right like yeah i mean yeah it's it's weird because all all it's it is it is tabs it is but it is and it's it's pin tabs it's profiles and bookmarks and like your actual open tabs you know like but it's the but it changes your relationship with tabs and that's what's kind of cool about it and and yeah. like and i found myself even i have notion uh here's all the web apps i use notion discord slack uh vs code um <laughs> figma you know like i have all these like apps on my desktop that are just web views and or or electron apps or whatever you want to call them and i'm like i i could use those just in my browser now because of how they've structured it and, and mm. the mental sort of paradigm, like just how they've reorganized it, just that subtle reorganization has changed my experience with tabs entirely. And so I think that's, what's cool about it. And sure, sure. I wish more people would try that and I don't know, more browsers would, you know, everyone, we're all just copying each other's homework. And so it'd be cool that, if we, somebody could just kind of do something different. And I think arc is doing that in their own weird unique way like the color picker is a weird synthesizer why yes. i don't know but it's cool it's unique what do you have any final thought before we go about like what like it is a competitive advantage right now that they have a very unique bespoke thing where they're they can experiment with all these and i guess the thing keeping others from doing it too is that it would like it it does interfere with your search, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's a weird mode and I think every browser could have a weird mode. I don't know. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> weird mode. I, I like it. Like we had quirks mode for ages. <laughs> Let's just do weird mode now. Nice. But like, um, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how they monetize and like, you know, when they, when they put <laughs> Microsoft news network ads into my, uh, whatever pop out bar, I might be upset, but yeah. Um, right. I, let's uh, see what happens. And if you, if you think of anything that you think is like a way to help that, um, let us know. Uh, love to hear more conversation on all these things because it, it seems like a hard problem and one that we need to eventually solve. And it would be great to not solve it. Like, when it's already an emergency crisis. Um, yeah, let's get ahead of the apocalypse. Right. So, hey, thanks for coming on. Uh, we're at we're at time. Uh, I want to make sure that we don't keep you too long. But uh, thanks so much for for this conversation. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks you too. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's it's big stuff. It's good mm -hmm. to talk about. Let's keep it going. Cool. Thanks. See you. Yeah.